On the line with me, I have Scott Dixon, noted sports car race driver. How are you doing today, Scott? I'm doing great, man. It's uh, it's good to be on the show, and thanks for having me. You know what? You are uh, doing your media circuit today, and and that's great. But people just love you, don't they? Uh, I wouldn't say everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, I'm a, I'm a realist, man. And and uh, yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I'm I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky. I love doing what I do, and and uh, I feel very blessed. So I'm gonna. Focus on the good stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but before we focus on the good stuff, let's talk about a couple of bad things. You had that accident at Portland, and then you had that bad accident at uh, Indianapolis uh, back a while. How are you feeling now? Yeah, good. It's uh, it's been you know pretty uh, pretty good. You know, I think eighteen and seventeen. You know, that that big crash at Indianapolis. Uh, I think in what was that seventeen was was definitely. Um, one of those situations where when you're in it, you know, you know, it's serious, you know, it's big. I remember looking down and, you know, I was probably 30, 40 feet in the air and, and like, I'm, I was like, wow, this is really going to hurt, you know, and you're kind mm-hmm. of still doing about uh, 200 miles an hour through the air. Uh, but when it actually finished, you know, you realize how lucky you were, you know, I stayed mostly out of the catch fence, you know, the catch fence seems to be, uh, you know, the, the really tough part for, for these cars, they kind of act like a, a bit of a cheese grater. Uh, but yeah, it was spectacular. I think the crash, when you see it, if you go and look at, look at it on YouTube and, and, uh, you'll see it you're like, wow, that was, that was big. But, uh, luckily, luckily enough to kind of hobble away there with, with just a, a fractured ankle and, and then, uh, go straight to Detroit, you know, for a double header that following weekend yeah. and, and have two full races. But um, yeah, no, I feel great, man. I'm, I'm pumped for the season and, and definitely excited to get going. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, talking about a crash, Ryan Newman, did you happen to see that one? I did, yeah. I definitely, uh, because, you know, our team also has uh, two cars, you know, with uh, with Kurt Busch and, and uh, you know, Larson. Um, you know, it was, it was uh, obviously always watching that race. You know, it's the Daytona 500. And I kind of, it took the replay, I think, to, to really see yeah. how hard that hit was. You know, I think how quickly it happened and how quick those cars, you know, sort of file through. Uh, but just... Uh, Really excited to, to see, you know, Newman 48 hours later, you know, walk out of uh, the hospital with his, uh, with his two girls. You know, it was definitely um, – they kept it pretty quiet and, and under wraps, you know, which I think kind of gave the impression that, that you know, his injuries were, were really severe, uh, yeah. which, you know, thank God uh, he was, was able to, to walk away and he's mending and hopefully back to racing here soon. All right. Uh, you are the consummate racer. We're going to get to what's happening in St. Pete in just a minute, but I have to wish you congratulations on Rolex 24. Ah, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a, a kind of unexpected, I think, you know, going into that year or to that race this year, um, we maybe necessarily didn't think we, we had the pace. Uh, for me, it was a big change too. You know, I'd done the the last 15 Daytona 24 hours with, with Chip Ganassi and, and Chip's team, uh, which is in-house. Uh, but then uh, he wasn't running a car this year, so decided to, to go out with, with Wayne Taylor Racing, who's had a, a fantastic track record there with uh, Konica Minolta and you know, honestly, uh, the race went perfectly. You know, uh, we had a few hiccups towards the end of the race, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, we were able to rebound and, and uh, capture another victory for them and, and my fourth uh, fourth Rolex Daytona. So it was really cool. Yeah, uh, people say you know uh, you're uh, you're a man's man, but I would say that you're also a racer's racer because uh, you love racing no matter what what type it is. I mean, we're not going to talk bicycles or anything around the block, <laughs> but but you like speed, you like racing, and you just love it, don't you? I do. You know, this, this off season was probably, you know, uh, I'm very lucky to, to drive for Chip. You know, he's a lot of different programs that, that are in-house and, and, and it makes me easy to kind of, you mm-hmm. know, switch between those. But, but uh, you know, this year I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and, and did a, you know, the 24 hour race with, with Wayne Taylor racing and then went to down to Australia a, a week later to do the Bathurst 12 hour and a GT3 car, which, which is um, probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in a, in a long time, uh, just with the combination of a track that I didn't know really high commitment circuit, super fast mm. and uh, in a car that, that was, uh, was difficult to drive. But um, yeah, man, I love racing. I'm, I'm very lucky. Uh, do you still have family in Australia or down under? Uh, so yeah, I've, uh, most of my family is in New Zealand. Um, okay. I was born in Australia, but, but, uh, that was just, and my parents were working there at the time, but yeah, all of my family, uh, are in New Zealand and, and I try to get home, you know, a couple of times a year. So, uh, yeah, everybody's doing well down there. All right. Oh, well, I was just going to say if they're still in Australia, how they're doing after the fires, but if they're in New Zealand, then they're probably doing okay. <laughs> 
luckily they've had some rain in Australia, you know, and, and when I was there, you know, a few weeks back, it, it seemed like they were starting to get most things yeah. under control, but uh, just, yeah, devastating times for them. For sure. All right. Rosenquist and uh, Ericsson, they're with you this year, aren't they? Yeah, team uh, team Sweden, man. It's uh, two Swedes and a Kiwi, so it's it's definitely uh, interesting <laughs> times, but but definitely fun. You know, I think to, to go back to three cars, I think it's added uh, a lot of depth to, to the team, and and uh, with you know the the closure of the Ford GT team and and them all kind of being uh, kept home uh, and then moved on to the IndyCar program has been fantastic as well, and, and added uh, you know some depth to the team that we needed. So I'm excited, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big year. Okay, uh, we've got in a couple of weeks here, we've got the uh, St. Pete Grand Prix right down here in St. Petersburg, Florida. A week after, it's going to be Sebring. But for the Indy cars, what is new or exciting about these cars and the season coming up this year that excites you? Well, I think, you know, it's always the competition level. And, and you know, for what was actually meant to be a pretty quiet off season, you know, as far as drivers, contracts and, you know, teams, there was a, a big shakeup. You know, you, you had, you know, the move with... Uh, yeah, I think the biggest one was was probably Hinch, you know, uh, leaving mm-hmm. McLaren and then them getting two rookies, uh, you know, per se, um, you know, to a few other drivers with Board A, you know, sort of being caught out of uh, the loop there and, and then, you know, moving on to another driver. So it, I don't know. There's a lot of different combinations this season, which I think will definitely be very exciting. Uh, but the big change as far as the car goes is the aero screen. You know, that's that's the, the much anticipated safety device that was added to, to our cars uh, you know, through through the winter break, um, you know, it uh, definitely makes the car look a lot different. You know, it looks more like a, you know, a fighter jet now with a with a canopy on the top. You know, and, and it's a big push and a, a safety initiative that the IndyCar and Red Bull Technologies and PPG have worked really hard on. And and uh, honestly, it's gone pretty seamlessly in the off season. Well, you know, we've seen that with Formula One. They've got the ring around there, and uh, and everything has been safety, and that's probably attributed to your uh, safe, uh, safe coming out of what happened in Indianapolis. Ryan Newman down in Daytona, safety of the car drivers, because if we don't have you guys driving it, there's no series. Yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, it's, it, it pushes in, it's pushing technology too. You know, I think, um, with, with the likes of formula one, it was, you know, the, the application is slightly different. You know, I think, uh, IndyCar is unique, especially with the high speeds that we get to, you know, almost 250 miles an hour at Indianapolis, uh, you know, and qualifying and, I think the the debris field too uh, at an oval race is much different to, to you know Formula One. So I think you know the application that they've done with you know a bigger, stronger uh, halo, uh, the framework of it, and then with the uh, the addition of this this uh, new high tech screen that that uh, is able to deflect it is is a huge advantage. Um, you know from from what we've had in the past. Okay, what are you looking forward to uh, here in St. Petersburg on that race? Uh, looking forward to trying to win, man. It's uh, it's been a it's it's been one that that I've you know I think I've finished second four or five times there. But uh, no, I think for everybody, it's just it's kicking off the season. You know, hopefully we we go down there like usual and the weather's perfect. Um, you know, for a lot of us that uh, all the teams that are based in the Midwest and in Indianapolis or you know even out in Charlotte, you know, I think it's uh, everybody's excited to to get to some warm weather that time of year. Uh, but I think, you know, the biggest thing is that there's, there's a lot of built up energy for, you know, four or five months off season, you know, and, and uh, everybody wants to get out there, get to that first race and, and try and get a, a win in the books. Did you like Laguna Seca last year? Yeah, Laguna, honestly, I didn't think it was going to be a good move for us, you know, going there. And, and, you know, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, for a track that's typically pretty hard to race on. We had fantastic racing. It was kind of weird. Like we almost had like alternate line, lanes, you know, mm-hmm. you had, you could go to a traditional sort of cut the apex where you could run really high. The grip was, you know, really high on the high line. Um, so yeah, I think it, it played well. There was a lot of different, uh, you know, structure, I think throughout that race and strategy and, and people making moves. And, and for the first time back to Laguna, man, that, that, that was an awesome race. Yeah. I kind of like some of those old fashioned races, like, you know, road America, like Laguna Seca, uh, you know, uh, Watkins Glen, uh, some of those nice traditional street courses, I think are really kind of neat or road courses. I, I agree, should say. man. Yeah, I agree. You can't beat road America. Like it's, uh, it's, it's so fun up there and just, you know, that's, that's a proper size track, I think for, for an Indy car and, and, you know, Watkins Glen, man, we've got to get back there. We're, we're on a, we're on a great roll there, but, uh, they keep taking that track away. 
Yeah, and, and and there's something about taking that longer trip and going down when you went to Watkins Glen down into the boot, you know, and yeah. kind of going down there. It extends the race a little bit, but it kind of makes it more interesting. It's and and ovals are fun. Let, don't get me wrong; you, people love the speed, but they also like to see how you maneuver, and and it's that's where the braking and the passing happens. It is, you know, and uh, but that's what I think is exciting about IndyCar racing, right? Is just the disciplines, you know. To to win a championship, you got to be, you know, yeah. good at a short track oval to a super speedway, then a street course and a road course. You know, it's it's. Uh, trust me, when you go from Indianapolis one weekend doing, you know, 250 miles an hour, and then mm-hmm. the next weekend you go to a double header at Detroit, you know, confined by brick walls on pretty much a concrete track, is is crazy, you know. So it's uh, those are the mixes, especially yeah. for the drivers that we all love. All right, uh, I've got to let you go because my time is up. Uh, do you want to say anything more? But what about tires? Yeah, just you got to come and check it out. You know, the the Firestone Grand Prix, March 15th, St. Pete. It's going to be awesome. I'll also be at Sebring 12 hours, so looking forward to that and teaming up with Wayne Taylor again. But, uh, yeah, you got to you got to be there. you got to check out uh, the kickoff race for, for the uh, NTT IndyCar Series, and, and hopefully uh, hopefully everybody's cheering on the PNC Bank number nine. That's what we need. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Scott. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Cheers.